It's all me pals! Step in time, step in time! Visual Studio Code release is here! For the October 2019 release of Visual Studio Code, it was focused on housekeeping GitHub issues and pull requests against the Visual Studio Code repository. So the team closed by either triaging or fixing 4,622 issues, which is crazy. During that time, the community created nearly 2,200 new issues. So that's net reduction of 2,427 issues. First feature up that we're gonna take a look at and highlight in this release of Visual Studio Code is the activity bar indicator. As we can see in the animated GIF here, that there's a white bar that shows up to indicate more visually what view we have active. Let's see how we can change some of the settings that are available to make this more obvious through the activity bar active border and activity bar active background setting. So if we want to adjust the look and feel of the activity bar indicator, we need to go into our settings. And specifically, we need to go back to the old settings.json view and we, we can get there by clicking on this icon that says open settings JSON. That opens up a new tab. We're gonna to wanna to use the option workbench color customization. That's a JSON object, so we'll hit tab to open that up. And then as the release notes indicated, we need to do activity bar dot active background to change what color we want it to be. We can see now it is red. So you can change that to whatever you want. And then there's also the border option that's available to us as well. And there we go. We can see the active border is now that highlighter green. Another nice visual customization that's been introduced in this release is the themable window border. The GIF kind of tells it all, but let's see how we can actually edit ourselves. Again, we're gonna go to settings. We're gonna open up settings JSON. We're gonna add a workbench color customization setting. And in here, we're gonna add the new settings, window active border and window inactive border. So the active border is when I have a certain instance of Visual Studio Code open, it will highlight it that way. And when it's inactive, it will highlight it with that certain color around it as well. In this case, you can see they're both red, that it's active. Let's change it to where when I'm active, it's actually green. So you can see it's green. And then if I click out of it to where it's not active, it goes to red. This is a great way to manage the different instances of Visual Studio Code that you might be using for multiple projects at the same time. Another option you can use here is the Peacock extension made by John Papa. Another feature, and for those of you that enjoy using Zen mode to keep from distractions, there's another option now that's available called silent notifications. So with this setting, it'll basically turn off all notifications except for errors that you might need to take into consideration as you're actively developing. So let's take a look at how we can turn this on through the silent notification setting. So Zen mode silent notifications, it is on by default and make sure that, that is checked and enabled in your settings to be sure. This one I'm really excited about because I like to split the editor quite a bit to see multiple files at once. And now we have more control. By default, you can see the size of splitting is evenly distributed among all the editors. But we have another option in split sizing and let's take a look at that in our settings. We search for split sizing, workbench editor split sizing. Right now by default, it's set to distribute. Let's tell it to use the option split and let's see how that differs in behavior. We open up our index.js file. I made it a little bit smaller for us to see more visually what's happening. And if I click the split icon, it splits it in half evenly. If I click split again, it splits among that active editor that we had open. So that's nice. If we go back to the other one, set it to distribute again, close these out, and I click split, it splits it evenly amongst all open editors. So you can see it's evenly three columns now, four, and so forth. VS Code has improved accessibility for showing definitions of our types and functions in our code now through a command called show definition preview hover. Previously, there was only the ability to show hover command, and now you can see the definition of a symbol in your code using this new command. Let's take a look at what that means. So if I open up my server.ts file, typically if you're using a mouse and you hover over a symbol in your code, it gives you a little bit more information about that symbol but if you hold the control or command key, depending on your operating system, you get to see the definition a little bit deeper into this particular symbol. Now, for accessibility purposes, we can use the command palette to access that information. Just make sure your cursor is over the symbol. Bring up the command palette with control shift P or command shift P, and you could say show hover, which was always there, or command shift P again, or control shift P, and say show definition preview hover. And now we get those more details all from the keyboard without having to use the mouse. This is a nice little improvement in VS Code with bracket matching. Previously, you had to actually click on the bracket to see its matching bracket. And now all you need to do is have your cursor within the context of the enclosing brackets and VS Code will highlight it for you. Let's jump over and see how that looks. Right now, my cursor is outside the enclosing brackets on lines 44 to 47 right here. And if I bring my cursor inside of it, bam, they're highlighted. In addition to this, I recommend using an extension called Bracket Pair Colorizer. Click on that, check it out. 
And you can see it colorizes things a little bit better instead of just the typical highlighting that you get out of the box with Visual Studio Code. This isn't anything new, it's just that they renamed the soft undo command to be cursor undo. It's really useful when you're selecting multiple instances of the same text in your code that you want to edit and do multi-line editing with. Sometimes you might select one more than you actually need. Let me show you an example. In this case, maybe I wanted to change this type from Boolean to another type in all these instances where I'm setting up some configuration. I'll select my code, I press Control D to select multiple lines at once, multiple instances of this text, but maybe I didn't want to actually grab that last one. I can press Control U and undo that last selection so then back to only the ones that I want to edit in this instance. A lot of improvements to the integrated terminal, one of which that I want to highlight is the new paste option for right-click behavior. Let's actually open up our settings, Control, comma, I type in terminal right-click. And we could see in this drop down some options. By default, it's set to copy paste now. You could have it set to just only paste when you right click or select a word or show the context menu. Let's test this out. I'm going to right click and there we go. It pasted the text that I had copied on my clipboard. There's been some improvements to source control. In particular, with Git, it improved the untracked files management. You can now choose to have the untracked changes in the source control view here to be grouped separately from the ones that are tracked. Let's take a look at how we can do that. We need to go into our settings and look at the git untracked changes setting. We're gonna change it from mixed to separate. And now if I add something to stage changes, or if I add a new file, we can see that the new file test.ts is untracked and separated differently. If I go back and change the setting to mixed, we can see the test just shows up as a change. Another added benefit that's been included in Visual Studio Code now is that we can right click on a file that's in our source control view and say reveal and explore. So if you're not sure why this file changed or you want to get a better understanding of the context of those changes, you can right click on the file and choose reveal and explore. And that pops open the explorer view for your project and the folders and files within it. All right, folks, that about does it in this one. I broke my broomstick in the making of this, so don't let it be a flop, please, okay? If you enjoyed it, you got some value out of it, maybe you got a laugh, please be sure to like and share it and let other people know about this video for Visual Studio Code features. Thanks again. I'll see you next time. Happy coding, everyone.